Welcome to part two of week five of the American Defense Manufacturing Intro to Three Gun video series. So in part one, we talked to you about your competition three gun rifle. In part two, we're gonna to talk to you about the optics, the scope, your red dot sights, and the mounts. Let's get into it and we're gonna start with the scopes. Okay, let's talk about scopes. The very first thing we're gonna talk about is first focal plane versus second focal plane. Most rifles, most scopes in three gun are going to be a second focal plane. All right, what that means is that when you're in your, looking through your scope and looking at the reticle, whether you're one power, three power, six power, or 10 power, that reticle is the same exact size all the way through the power band. All right, first focal plane, that reticle is going to zoom in and zoom out as you move through your power from one to six or one to 10, whatever the case may be. So what is the benefit of that? All right, so in the second focal plane, if you zero your rifle at 200 yards and your first stadia is 300, second stadia line is 400, third stadia line is 500, that's what that's gonna be at six power. If you're at three power or four power or two power, that's going to change. That 200 is going to stay 200, but that next stadia is gonna go from a 300 yard hold to maybe a 390. And then that fourth one's gonna to go to 580. And then the, the fourth one is going to, or fifth one, is going to go up 780. Whatever the case is going to be, it's going to drastically change. So if you're running at three power, then you're shooting long range, and you go 200, and then you're going to start to shoot 300, expecting that third stadia line to line up and hit, and it's going to be shooting way over top of that 300-yard target. So that is the, 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 the thing for a, the second focal plane. Second focal planes are less expensive than a first focal plane. All right, now the benefit of having the first focal plane and paying a little bit more money is that it's the same lineup, the same holds all the way through the power band. So whether you're at one, two, five, or 10, if your stadia is lined up for 200, 300, 400, 500, it's gonna be 200, 300, 400, 500, all the way through the power band, all the way from one to 10 power or one to six power, whatever the case may be. So I hope that helps you to understand the difference between a first focal plane and second focal plane. Okay, the next thing we're gonna talk about is the magnification power. All right, most scopes that you run in three gun are a one to six power. One to six power is plenty of scope for pretty much any match you shoot. There are gonna be the occasional major matches that you shoot uh, that may have targets out to 700 yards, 600 yards. And it's nice to have a little extra magnification but not completely necessary. They're usually gonna be a little bit larger target, so they're a little bit more forgiving and show up in your, your reticle a little bit better. Okay, now, that being said, Vortex has a phenomenal one by 10. That's a first focal plane. So a lot of guys are starting to run that nowadays, but there is a price difference. It's priced at $2,000 versus the Vortex Razor is priced at 1,300 for the one by six, second focal plane. So, uh, whatever the, the power magnification is, 1x6 is plenty. There are also 1x8s. You'll see a lot of 1x8s. Uh, Vortex has the Strike Eagle 1.8. They've got the Strike Eagle 1 to 6. Uh, there are a lot of other companies that have uh, a 1x8 as well. I know that uh, Collis has one. Um, I'm sure Burris has one. Uh, uh, now there's a, my mind's just blanking on me right now and all the other different uh, manufacturers. Primary Arms, I believe, has one. Athlon has one. There's a lot, but one thing that I'll tell you, much like everything in, in the previous video in part one, is that if you want to, to buy a new scope, if you're not sure what to get, what you like, what's going to, to best fit your budget, what's best gonna fit uh, your rifle and your needs, go to a match, talk to your friends, talk to other shooters, take a look and test them out. See what's gonna work for you. Uh, you can ask people on social media, hey, what's gonna be the, the best scope? and they're gonna blast out a hundred different answers to you. It depends on what they run because whatever they run is gonna be the best thing out there since sliced bread. So go ahead and, uh, and get out there and do the research and put your hands on before you buy, all right? Uh, I'm a big believer in, uh, in the world of, of three gun and competition shooting parts, buy once, cry once. Uh, this is an expensive sport to get into, so there's no need in buying something that you're gonna re wanna replace four months, five months down the road. So get out there, do the research, put your hands on the product uh, before you even make the purchase. All right, let's talk a little bit about your red dot sights. 
All right, so red dot sites are gonna be found in two different divisions. One is in limited, where you do not have a magnified optic, all right? Limited is gonna be just a red dot, and it's gonna be mounted in the traditional place on top of the rifle on the Picatinny rail, okay? Uh, if you're shooting open, you'll have a red dot usually. The red dot runs off site or uh, 45 degree, like this Vortex Razor offset red dot right here. What that does is it allows you, if you're shooting long range or going in, and you've got a lot of close in stuff, you can just turn and get the red dot right through the, the offset and pick up the, the sight picture that way instead of having to zoom in and out of one power to six power or vice versa. So that's gonna be where you run the red dot sight in your, uh, for your rifle in open. There's a lot of different brands and manufacturers out there that make red dots that are gonna hold up and they're gonna last and gonna do you very well. Of course, I'm running the Vortex Razor uh, there are a lot of other manufacturers. You've got Seymour. We've got a little bit of wind going here. Uh, you've got Holosun, Athlon, uh, Primary Arms has some red dots. So there's a lot of different ones out there, um, different MOAs in the dot. So your MOA is going to be how big your dot gets. So the bigger the dot, the more it's going to cover up your target. So having an 8 MOA dot, if you're running that as your primary and limited, is not necessarily a good thing because if you're shooting at 300 400 yards it's going to cover up your target a lot of times so a little bit smaller dot or the ability to uh um make the dot smaller you know as you adjust the brightness is going to be key for you there so uh think about that when you're buying it uh, i wouldn't buy an eight moa dot um for a rifle if i was running limited i'd probably run a four or so uh if i'm running offset side saddle six moa pistol 6 MOA I like the little bit larger dot for that because you're shooting things up close so you're not worried about the size of the dot being larger than the target all right let's talk about mounts for just a little bit all right so American Defense Manufacturing makes some of the best mounts on the market uh, one of their most popular is the recon mount they've got a few other in the lineup but the recon is the most popular it's a two-piece mount that allows you to take off your one scope leave the rings and the base or the the base mount it to the gun and you can switch out the the um your optic your scope that way they have 45 degree offset mounts for your red dots uh either right hand or left hand side um they've got the uh cantilever you can see it here Let's see if we can bring it around up here they've got the cantilever mounts so that you can take it off just undo the paddles there and it comes right off, all right? So, uh, there's a couple others. Um, I like to run the two inch offset. So you can see that right here, this sits two inches forward. So that's one of the most popular, uh, one of the most popular offsets and scopes for three gun. You're also gonna get them at different heights, uh, a short, medium, and a high, a tall, so to speak, so that it sets the, the optic further off the the uh, top of the rifle where that comes in some people the way they position their heads the way they get down behind the gun they like a taller mount some like a little bit shorter mount me I like to run a middle of the road mount um, no matter what I do no matter what kind of stock I'm running that's kind of the sweet spot for me so I don't run the tall ones uh, but again uh, get out there and check out the mounts check out the optics talk to people see what they like see what they're running get behind the gun and see what is going to fit you personally all right remember to um uh, remember to, to just uh take the time and do the research uh, don't make the mistake of, of buying one thing not being happy with it then having to sell that for half of what you paid for it and then going out and buying something else all right so the american defense manufacturing scope mounts are one of the most popular another one is worn scope mounts um, there are other manufacturers. Vortex has their own scope mounts as well. So there's a lot of options out there. Just do the research. If you have any questions, always feel free to, to send us a message or give us a call at Stage Zero Shooting Supply. Okay, so that wraps up part two of week five of the American Defense Intro to Three Gun video series. Now, with that being said, don't forget to log on to the Tar Heel 3G website and to register for one of the giveaways from this week. We've got the Timney Trigger AR Impact Trigger with 45, 49 degree ambidextrous safety. We've got the JP Silent Capture AR-15 uh, Silent Capture Spring 
and we got the Vortex Strike Eagle 1 to 8. Be sure to register and stay tuned next week to see if you won. Appreciate you, thank you, and have a good day. Hey there, welcome to week two of the American Defense Manufacturing Intro to 3-Gun video series. Last week in week one, we talked briefly about what is 3-Gun. We talked about some safety considerations. We talked about range etiquette. What is a major match versus a monthly match and a few other things. If you missed week one, feel free to go back on our YouTube channel with Tar Heel 3-Gun and watch week one. All right, this week we are going to talk about the different divisions within 3-Gun. All right, historically there have been four major divisions. We've had TAC Ops, there are no red dots in TAC Ops. All right, we've had Open, we've had Heavy Metal, and we've had Limited. Now, with the American Defense Manufacturing Tar Heel Challenge, we're introducing a new, a new division called Carry Optics. We'll go more into that here shortly. The first division we're gonna talk about is TAC Ops. All right, TAC Ops division. TAC Ops is the most participated in division within 3-Gun. All right, it allows for a 223-556 rifle platform with one magnified optic. All right, the mag capacity or the rifle, the, the magazine capacity, uh, there's really no limitation. You can run a Magpul D60, you can run 20, 30, 40 round magazines, you can have them coupled, you can have base pads on them which extend the capacity to 25, 35, or 45 rounds. Anything goes as far as that's concerned. One magnified optic, no magazine, no round capacity on your magazines. All right, a pistol. Pistol is typically a striker fried pistol or 2011 platform, 141 millimeter uh, magazine. What that generally translates into is about 22 to 23 rounds in your magazine. If you're getting 26 rounds, 27 rounds, your magazine's too large, you need to drop it back, all right? There are no red dots allowed on your pistol though. No red dots in TAC Ops. No matter what kind of rumors or effort that Dave Hartman tries, there are no red dots allowed in TAC Ops. All right, shotgun. Your shotgun is gonna be a tube fed, uh, 12 gauge shotgun, semi-automatic. You're gonna be able to hold 12 to 13 rounds in your tube. Anything more than that, you're gonna start to have feeding and reliability issues, all right? No red dot on your shotgun. That, that, in a nutshell, is the equipment for uh, your rifle, pistol, and shotgun in TAC Ops. Okay, open division. Open division is hot on the hills as far as participation as it relates to TAC Ops. It's catching up quick. A lot of that has to do with the reliability and availability of the box-fed shotguns. Now, in open division pretty much anything goes you can use bipods tripods offset red dots uh, magnified optics you can use box fed uh, shotguns you can have 171 millimeter magazines for your pistol which will allow for a roughly 28 to 29 rounds in your magazine for your pistol so you can have compensators 
The uh, red dot can be frame mounted, it can be slide mounted on your pistol, whatever the case may be. It's kind of an anything goes, it's the wild, wild west of three gun. So heavy metal traditionally has been a 308 or larger caliber rifle along with a pump action 12 gauge shotgun and a 40, 45 caliber pistol. All right now, a lot of that has, has evolved and there are only a few matches that still allow true heavy metal. Most have evolved to being the same gear as TAC Ops with the exception of a 308 rifle. All right, that makes it really easy to know what the differences are and what you're allowed to do if you've been shooting TAC Ops. You switch out your AR platform or your rifle platform for a 308 caliber or larger with one magnified optic, no offset red dot, but you can have uh, in TAC Ops and heavy metal, you can have an offset iron sights or backup iron sights on there as well. Okay, limited division. Limited is just that. Everything is limited, all right? Your rifle mag capacity, 30 rounds. Nothing more, can't hold more. 30 rounds is where it's at. Your pistol capacity, usually limited to 15 to 17 rounds. So a factory style mag. There are a few mags out there from the factory that will hold 21 rounds. Uh, if that's the case, you'll have to switch out to something that's smaller that holds 15 to 17 rounds. No base pads, anything like that are allowed. On your rifle, you're only allowed a red dot optic. You can't have any magnification on your rifle, and of course there's no red dots allowed on your pistol or your shotgun. Your shotgun tube is allowed to have an eight round capacity. That's all it can hold. If you've got a 12 to 13 round tube and are deciding to shoot in limited, you have to put plugs in it or put a plug in it to limit your capacity to eight rounds. Now you'll start the stage with nine rounds. So what do you do? You just go ahead and chamber around, add a round back to your mag tube, and now you've got nine rounds. All right, so with going through TAC Ops Open, Heavy Metal, and Limited, there's a new division that we are introducing at the American Defense Manufacturing uh, Tar Heel Challenge. So that division is Carry Optics. Carry Optics was made for those who want red dots in TAC Ops, okay? You know, the fact is, is that USPSA uh, carry optics is one of the fastest growing divisions in USPSA. So it makes sense to have a division that allows for a red dot on a pistol in TAC Ops. But we're not going to add red dots, to, red dots to TAC Ops. So what we have is carry optics. Carry optics is TAC Ops, but with a slide rod red dot only. No compensator. The red dot cannot be frame mounted. So it is a slide rod only red dot on your pistol. Everything else, magazine uh, uh, capacity for your shotgun, for your pistol, for rifle, uh, magnification, uh, one magnified optic on your rifle, everything else is exactly the same as TAC Op. So that covers the main divisions of 3-Gun as well as a new division that we're introducing at the American Defense Manufacturing Tar Heel Challenge. Alright, we appreciate your time. Thank you for checking us out. We hope to see you next week. Uh, from our family to yours, we want to wish you a Merry Christmas. Thank you and have a blessed day.